say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And then one day I'll reach heaven shore, oh please, let me kneel once more. I've got so much to thank Him for.
say it. It'd be all right. Let it come from your lips. Yeah. Say the name of Jesus. Tell you what, you can take that name and you can use it towards anything in your life that you're facing. Doubt that you're facing, you can say Jesus, Jesus right? Fear that you're facing, you can say what? Jesus, Jesus right? Uh, circumstances you can't control, you can say what? Jesus, Jesus right? I tell you, the name is above all other names. Uh, there is power within the name of Jesus. Amen. I can face uncertain days uh, because I know the man named Jesus. Amen. Uh, if it wasn't for the man named Jesus uh, and it wasn't for the name of Jesus, uh, we would have no hope uh, in this world alone. But because of the name Jesus, we can take uh, victory. Uh, we can take power. We can take control of anything uh, within our lives. name of Jesus. Amen. The name of Jesus. If you got your words this morning, I flip over to Philippians uh, chapter number 3. I thought Brother Rich was going to hit me this morning. Uh, he was a chapter a little bit further over there. He was in chapter 4, but we're going to get chapter number 3 this morning. Anybody alive out there this morning? Amen. 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 Now, some of you need to tell yourself that you're alive this morning. Y'all sound pretty dead out there to me this morning. Tell you what, everybody stand up for me. Everybody stand up for me. Y'all just stretch for Jesus just for a minute. I mean, just, just stretch out for Jesus. Raise them hands up. It'll be all right. Uh, just raise them in praise. It'll be all right. We need to stretch a little bit. I tell you what, before I go to the gym, if I don't stretch it out, I'm a hurt before it's over with. Uh, I tell you, if you come into church all stubbed up uh, and stubbed up and you ain't stretching out for the Lord, uh, by the time it gets through with, you're going to think, man, what did I just get myself into? You just go ahead and limber yourself up with the Lord this morning uh, and let it bless you whatever he's got this morning. Amen. 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 Uh, chapter number 3 and verse number 13 and verse number 14. Uh, just two verses this morning, but there's a whole lot within these two verses I want us to get out of. Uh, it says, Brethren, I count not myself uh, uh, to have apprehended, uh, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind uh, and reaching forth unto those things that are before me, I press toward the mark uh, for the prize of the high calling of, of the God in Jesus Christ. Lord, we just ask you now this morning that you would take your word, Lord, uh, and God anoint it to our ears this morning, Lord Jesus. God, uh, let it go past our ears, Lord Jesus, and to our very hearts, Lord, uh, that God, that we might be able to eat from your table this morning, Lord Jesus. God, uh, I think a lot of people come in this morning uh, and left their silverware at the house, God, uh, but I pray, Lord, that we find an extra set somewhere this morning, Lord, uh, that God, we can eat from your table, Lord. Uh, ain't no sense of showing up if we ain't going to eat this morning, Lord. Uh, God, I pray now, Lord, Give us an appetite, Lord Jesus. God, show us, Lord, the things you need us to see from this word. And God, I pray that it becomes a life application, Lord, that we'll submit in our lives, Lord. And God, we'll hear from you this morning, Lord Jesus. Now, God, you have your way. God, move me out of the way, Lord. For God, you don't need me, but I need you, Lord. God, I can't do this without you, Lord Jesus. Uh, God, uh, what needs to be done here this morning, Lord, uh, is way beyond my strength and power, God. Uh, but, Lord, we need a touch from above, God. Uh, we need your hand, your grace, and your mercy rain down upon us, Lord. Uh, God, we need your word opened up and explained to us this morning, Lord. Uh, and, God, I'm praying that that can be done this morning, Lord Jesus. Now, God, you have your way, Lord. Uh, liven your people up, Lord Jesus. And, God, uh, set us on fire, Lord. For, God, the... Uh, the flames dim this morning, Lord Jesus. God, the flames dim this morning, Lord. Just help us out, Lord Jesus. In your precious name we do pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I tell you what, my grandparents growing up, uh, they had a wood stove. And that wood stove is the only thing they had to heat the place with. Uh, and every once in a while, they had to go down there and open up that thing. Uh, and they'd get this long stick-looking thing with a pointed end on it and had a little hook uh, on the end of it there. And he would take, my papa would take that thing out. And he says, son, what I'm doing uh, is I'm stoking the fire. Praise God. Yeah, we need the Lord to stand up uh, and stoke the fire within Amen. here this morning. Uh, uh, the word, the flame's going out, but I tell you, the heat's still there. We just got to get the flame going again. Amen. Uh, he needs to reach out of that spiritual poker there uh, and stoke the fire a little bit this morning. Anybody need to be stoked this morning? Amen. Yeah, I said, anybody need to be stoked this morning? Amen. Amen. Uh, the church needs to be stoked this morning. Y'all done got in here. I preached uh, uh, several months ago about the ovens at the church house growing cold uh, and fresh bread ain't coming out and we're finding crumbs in the carpet. Uh, this morning, I think a few of you are just searching for 
for crumbs in the carpet. You can care less about the fresh loaf. Amen. I tell you, we need to get hungry for that fresh loaf again. We need to get hungry for the good hot stuff. I don't want to be eating no stale uh, crumbs. I don't want no croutons. I need that good fresh soft stuff that I can lather me some butter upon and enjoy for a little while. Amen. <laughs> If y'all want to eat crumbs, just, have, just pack it on up the house. You'll find some in the car somewhere Amen. from previous services, I'm sure. Amen. But if you want uh, some fresh bread this morning, I tell you that you can take a hot knife uh, and slice it, and it just steam up, uh, praise God. Uh, and that butter will go on so smoothly because it's hot and fresh this morning. Uh, that's what I want. Uh, if you don't want it, uh, then get it fixed with God so you do want it, praise his name. Uh, I ain't ever craved uh, a hot roll. Uh, I tell you, I love going to Ryan's and Logan's and places like that. That before when I could have bread. Uh, but I love to go there and I'd fill up on those hot rolls, praise God. Uh, you slap a little bit of honey butter and a hot roll and that stuff melt and you bite into that thing and it done dripping down the sides of your face uh, because you don't enjoy it. Uh, what you taking in? This morning y'all look like you're chewing on some crunchy croutons. Uh, and you ain't enjoying what you got this morning. Uh, I tell you, the ovens are here. You just gotta fire them up. Yeah. Come on, come on. Now fire them up. Church, we've sat here too long with ovens turned down too low. You can't make bread if the oven's turned down too low. You got to turn that oven on up a little bit uh, and stick that bread in there uh, and watch what that oven can do. God says, hey, I got the bread if you got the oven. Amen. I say, he said, I got the bread if you got the oven. Matter of fact, I've already got it set up. It's already been rising a little bit. I'm ready for you to throw it on the pan and stick it inside the oven. We gotta get them ovens turned on this morning. Them ovens turned on this morning. Amen. Tell you, I don't know where we're going this morning, but I tell you, if you know, you let me know. But I'd rather just let the Lord let me know where we're going this morning. I don't know if we're going to touch this right here. If not, uh, you just go home and study the little power. But it's time uh, that we soak up the flames in God's house. Uh, we can't uh, expect the world uh, to understand what fresh bread is uh, if we ain't going to serve fresh bread uh, in the church house. Uh, if you come in here uh, uh, desiring something uh, and you don't get a fix from it, uh, then you're going to go out the same way you come in. And why in the world would the world want to come inside of a day and try to church? And they don't, hey, they don't want a part of that. They can have all that they want on the outside. And I had to get up in the mornings on Sundays and sacrifice a little time on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights and Wednesdays and any other time that we have a service out here. <coughs> they can get that mess from the outside world. It's time the church stopped serving world the mess. I said it's time for the church to stop serving worldly mess. It's time that we get in on in on what God has got for us and start serving that heavenly bread, praise God. It's time that we get on and start eating and let the juices run down our faces. And when we walk out of here and somebody looks at us and says, man, he's been eating good. Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. Chapter number 3, verse number 13. Maybe, just maybe, this could be the reason why we eat croutons instead of fresh bread. Just maybe this morning. Paul's talking here to the church of Philippi, to the Philippians here. And he tells me, he says, Brethren, uh, I count not myself to be apprehended. To be apprehended, uh, to be incarcerated, uh, to, uh, uh, to be imprisoned. Uh, I don't count myself to be in prison. He's telling them uh, that in his life uh, and the sins of his life, uh, the past mistakes of his life, uh, I'm not going to let those things apprehend me uh, from serving God. See, a lot of us don't understand is that those mistakes that we had uh, just let you know that we still a work in progress, right? Uh, and that we're a work in progress. Uh, I tell you, I ain't what I I'm going to be one day, for I'm a work in progress. I ain't perfect here, but one day I'm going to get that perfect body, and I'm no longer going to be a work in progress, but I'm going to be a finished product. Amen. Praise God. But while I'm here, I'm going to be a work in progress. I'm going to mess up. I'm going to stumble. I'm going to have things happen in my life that I ain't proud of. But I ain't going to let it stop me. 
as a kid, I played uh, center for the football team, uh, and and, and I, it wasn't a choice. It wasn't a position that I chose. Uh, Coach just said, "Son, uh, I think you'd be good at it." So I do my best, uh, and I get down there, and I had that ball, and I get ready to hike that thing uh, just as soon uh, as the quarterback says, "Hut, hut, hut." And all of a sudden, I depended on how many times he said it, uh, was to how long it took before I hiked that ball. Praise God. Sometimes, the count would be on three. And I'd hike it on four. And I'd mess up. And when I hiked it on four, uh, somebody on the line over here, uh, they knew it's supposed to have been hiked on three. And praise God, uh, they done jumped the line there. They done jumped before the ball moved. Uh, and I done messed up uh, and caused just about a 10 yard penalty there or five yard, whatever it was. Uh, I, I'm not a big football guru. I can just tell you what I played when I was a kid, praise God. Uh, but I tell you, I'd cost just a little something. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, if I had snapped it too early, uh, they would have sneaked around and grabbed the quarterback uh, before the play got in motion. Yeah. I'd have done messed up. <coughs> but I could have taken uh, that mistake, uh, and I could have dwelled on that mistake, uh, and we would have never won the game. We would have never finished the game. Because I was stuck on that one play. That's what Christians do a lot of times. Uh, we get stuck on our mess ups. Uh, we get marred up in some clay somewhere. In some nasty mud somewhere. In some sin uh, that we got hung up in. Uh, and we won't forgive ourselves. Uh, and even though God says, hey, uh, if you'll just repent, uh, I'll forgive you as far as the east is from the west. Uh, for no more for me to remember it again, praise God. Uh, but yet what happens? Uh, we tend to remember it ourselves. Uh, and to keep ourselves from moving forward for God. We get stuck. <laughs> We just, I can remember uh, as a kid growing up in youth group, uh, I went to church at Spring Creek, uh, a little bit further uh, west there, uh, over there, and, and we come up here to Darwin Baptist one day, uh, this before I knew y'all, really knew y'all, uh, and I got to singing one song called Midnight Cry, and I tell you, I could sing that song I thought pretty good, uh, and I'd sing it at my church, and it was all right, pretty decent, uh, but I got up here, and I flopped it. Pretty bad. I mean, I come in here and I ain't gonna say nothing about I skating down the hot down the aisle right here because it was so cold and dead in here. But praise God, it didn't matter what it was like in here. I just knew what I'd done in myself. I done messed it up. Amen. I done messed it up in front of all those people. One too many, but there was a there was a few out here in the crowd, and I sung that song and I messed it up. What if I would have let that hinder the work that God had for me? later in my life. I'd have never been part of Glory Bound. I'd have never been in a singing group. Uh, I'd have never led songs uh, uh, here or at the church I come from. Uh, I would have never uh, went forward in what God had for me uh, because uh, I allowed myself to be incarcerated uh, by my mistakes. Don't let your mistakes uh, dip. Let's not get ahead. <laughs> Praise God. Let's move on right here. Uh, it says a uh, myself uh, to have apprehended uh, but this one thing I do forgetting those things uh, which are behind uh, forgetting those things which are behind uh, I'm not going to let my yesterday uh, dictate to me uh, what my future holds uh, I'm not going to let my yesterday or my mistake uh, hold me back uh, from moving forward for God that's right Amen. Come on. anybody ever messed up in here okay. amen, amen. amen. Long. Anybody ever dwell too long on a mess? <laughs> Amen. I tell you, I was one of those people, and I still am quite a bit, and I struggle with this, and I pray that God helps me with this because uh, it's probably not a good quality to have. Uh, but uh, growing up uh, and all my life, and I guess just the situations uh, and the, the hand that I was dealt here, uh, i become a people pleaser. I thought what was best for me was to please everybody else around me. That way I could have a little bit of happiness. Uh, I didn't go through uh, a normal childhood. I had ups and downs and rough roads to hold, uh, and, and it was just a hard path. Uh, and so I thought, uh, and I figured out pretty easily uh, that the more people I pleased, uh, the happier they were around me, uh, no matter what I felt. Why? No matter how it made me feel. <clears throat> and I had to learn very quickly that pleasing other people isn't necessarily pleasing God. 
Amen. Pleasing other people isn't necessarily pleasing God. I can come in here this morning uh, and I can slap you on uh, uh, this pretty little message uh, and I can get it just as worldly as I wanted to uh, to make you feel as comfortable as you need to uh, so that you didn't feel any conviction whatsoever. Uh, but what gain uh, does that have in the church house? Uh, what gain does that have uh, in God's uh, uh, word? What gain does that have uh, in, in God's uh, what he wants done here at our church? Uh, it has no gain whatsoever. We might as well pack it up and head to the house if we're going to sit here and do worldly things. Amen. Try to please each other. God's word's not here to please you, but it's here to prick your heart. It's not here uh, to go along with what you want, uh, but it's here uh, to begin to convict and to mold and to shape you into something that he wants and not something that you want this morning. Not only uh, do I not let my, my, uh, uh, my mistakes uh, incarcerate me or, or, or bind me up, uh, and I get stuck, and uh, I tell you, I don't know much about golf, uh, but I know that there's 18 holes usually uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a thing there, or whatever those things are called, and if you get to putting, and you hit that thing, uh, and you miss the hole, uh, and you don't mess it up, and you're past par on that one, uh, and you stand there, and you beat yourself up about it, uh, the other 17 holes will never get played. We got too many Christians in the church house that's stuck on, plot, on hole number one. And you ain't moved past hole number one because you hung up on the mistakes you made there. Don't let those mistakes hang you up. Let them teach you what not to do next time. Let them teach you what not to do. As a matter of fact, here it says, Paul says, uh, uh, this one thing I do, uh, forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. Now, does that mean uh, that I should erase those from my memory? No. What he's saying uh, is I'm not going to let those things hold me up, uh, but I'm going to let those things teach me what not to do next time. You see, uh, uh, Paul here says, uh, I want you to understand uh, that next time, uh, whatever you're facing, uh, let your mistakes uh, show you what you don't need to do in the future. Praise God. Don't let them hold you back, uh, but let them show you what not to do uh, in the future. Let them show you what not to do in the future. When I come into Darn here and I sung that song, I sung it just as monotone as the next person. I mean, it was like I was tone deaf. I'd done so bad. And I tell you, I sung that song and I realized uh, that I can stand here uh, and I can do it on my own or I can allow God to, uh, to embody me uh, and sing through me. Uh, now, whenever I sing for myself, uh, it's bad. Uh, but when I let the Lord sing for me uh, and for His glory, uh, I don't care what it sounds like to you, uh, but it's a blessing to His ears, praise God. Uh, it may sound like a bunch of cattle rolling to you, uh, but I tell you, when I go to singing uh, and I close my eyes uh, and I feel that connection, with the Lord Jesus. It ain't about you anyways. It's about me. What's happening is you're getting to glean off of the fruits that's happening in my life. The harvest that's taking place. Y'all are just getting a few seeds flung out there a little bit here and there as I'm reaping harvest. Amen. Come on. When God begins to work and you allow him to work within you. Amen. 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 Don't let past mistakes <coughs> keep you from anything. Don't let them uh, hold you back there. Uh, uh, I say, uh, uh, Paul says uh, uh, that I have work, that, that I'm a work in progress, uh, that I am not going to be held back. Uh, see, a work in progress means that there's still gain being, or there's still ground being gained, right? Uh, if I was to be a dead work, uh, I wouldn't be moving forward. Uh, but with me being a work in progress means that I'm going to let whatever has happened to me uh, uh, help me understand uh, what needs to happen next. Uh, and I begin to pray to God to help reveal things to me uh, and help me understand things uh, a little bit better so that I can move forward uh, in what he has for me. Uh, not only can I move forward because I'm not incarcerated or I can move forward because I'm not in prison or I can move forward because I'm not tied up uh, by my previous mistakes, uh, but I can begin to forget uh, about the things that held me back uh, and look forward to the things that are going to take me forward. Uh, I can look to God and what God wants from me uh, versus what self wants from me. If you want to get hung up somewhere, you look to self uh, and try to figure it out on your own. And you'll get hung up every single time. Lastly here, Paul says, uh, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. God calls us all to move forward. In his work. God calls us all to press forward in his work. I wonder how many of us are truly pressing 
this morning? Or we just got comfortable where we at in life and it's got stagnant. And we're no longer moving forward, but yet we're stuck in the same place. Stuck in the same place. How many of you know you can't serve God in stagnant water? How many of you know, I, listen, I don't want to swim in no stagnant water. Over there on Tomlin Chapel Road, before they drained it, there used to be a pond over there in the curve. Uh, and that thing, there wasn't hardly any airflow to it. Uh, and it was just as green as nasty green can be. All across that, there wasn't a spot of water. They didn't have some kind of green algae and nasty mess upon it. And you want to know why? It's because that water was stagnant. Uh, there was no stirring of that water. And there's too many of us that live uh, in a stagnant state. Uh, and we want God to move in our lives. But yet, we want to land to stir the waters. We won't allow him to stir the waters because God, life is comfortable where it's at. I enjoy right where I'm at. I don't want any more. I don't want any less, but I definitely don't want any more. And I'm comfortable right where I'm at. Sometimes God lays things before you that he needs you to accomplish. But unless you allow him to stir the waters, and unless you allow him to let you move forward, unless you have a mindset, that I want to press forward to more of what God's got for me. You see, what God gave me yesterday, it was good for yesterday, but I need something for today. And what God gives me today is great for today, but I'm looking for what God's going to give me tomorrow. And I want it to continue to come in and be sufficient in grace and in mercy in my life. And as long as I'm moving forward for Him, He can continue to bless me. He can continue to bless me. I tell you, uh, we face uh, uh, this life and we face it with an attitude that, woe is me, I've messed up, what can I do about it? And I sit there and I break myself down. See, that's exactly where Satan wants you to be. He wants you to get stuck in a spot of sin. And the longer you're stuck there, the deeper you get. Anybody ever got in a hole and you're trying to dig yourself out? You can't dig yourself out of a hole. You just dig yourself deep. For you need help from above. You can't provide the help yourself. You need help from above. See, if I got stuck in a hole somewhere, I'd have to call Danny Montgomery and go grab his tractor and a rope. Uh, and hopefully he can pull me out of there from above. Uh, but if I had a shovel and he says, here, son, dig yourself out. And he throws me a shovel down there. I would just make things worse. That's how we get sometimes. We get caught up in sin. And that sin has a hold of our lives and we try to fix it ourselves. And before we know it, we done dug deeper than what we ever were before. Because we got apprehended by the sin itself. By the sin itself. I've been there. It's not a place you want to be. You don't want to be apprehended <laughs> by sin. And the longer, Brother Rex said it so well this morning. He said the longer you let that sin sit in your life, uh, the, lo the, 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 the longer that you let sin take over, the harder it is to get back. See, if sin happens and you repent of that sin, it can be done with right then. But if you allow time to pass upon that sin, first off, that sin's got a greater hold on you than it ever did before. Second off, it's harder to repent of that stuff because the, the flesh, the body desires the pleasures of sin. The body desires the pleasures of sin. Don't let sin grab a hold of you and keep you bound up. Break free with Jesus. Allow him to come in and to cleanse you. Allow him to come in and to remove you out of that hole. Allow him to come in and change your situation. You can sit in that situation all you want to, but it's never going to change until you allow the Lord to come in and fix it. Amen. Never going to change until you allow the Lord to come in and fix it. Your finances, your marriage, your job, your kids, any situation that you face. If you face it alone, you'll make it worse or mess it up. But if you allow God to go before you and lay the groundwork already, let him lead you in the direction you need to go. Let him fix what needs to be fixed and you leave your hands off of it. Allow God to begin to work. We have that human mentality that we need to fix it all ourselves. And we tell God, hey, we got this. And really, we don't. Really, we don't. 
We don't have it. I can't fix it. But he can. I can't fix it. But he can. Anybody ever had a problem in here? And at first you didn't take it to the Lord and it just seemed like it grew and got bigger and got bigger. And all of a sudden you got so wore down with this little video problem over here. My car won't start because the battery's dead. But then I go out there and I try to fix that thing. Uh, and I take things off of it, put more things on it. And I got more money sunk in that thing. Uh, and it ain't worked for me in three weeks. And it's all because uh, the battery was dead on it. And I was done working on something else. You see, uh, uh, that's how we do in our spiritual lives. And in our, in our physical lives, we tend to work on things ourselves and try to fix ourselves. And see, God's saying, hey, listen. Just listen to me. It's just a battery. It's just a battery. Go jump it off. Get you a new battery. It's just the battery. Let me fix it for you. But no, we go out there and we try to do it ourselves. And we mess it up. I tell you, if I were to work on my own vehicle, I'd mess that thing up. I couldn't tell you the difference between, I couldn't tell you the difference between any of them. I can tell you where the battery is and where the dipstick is, and that's about it. Probably not a good thing uh, uh, being a single man, but, but I had to rely upon my brother many times to change my oil or change my spark plugs uh, or to do uh, to replace belts and things like that, but I couldn't tell you a thing about it. I'm just like that in my spiritual life too. I couldn't tell you a thing about how to fix it. But I know the mechanic that can. I know the mechanic that can. I know the one that can take care of every problem that I have and me not have to raise a hand towards it. He can come down and fix it just like that. If you bound up in sin and you ain't made it past the first the first, uh, uh, the first hike of the ball or the first tee off of, of golf or, or, or whatever it is, if you ain't made it past the first, there's plenty more out there for you to go. But you've got to make it past the first. Don't get hung up in high grass out here. Let God come and forgive you of that. Forget about that stuff. Let it help you understand how to not do it again. But don't let it hold you back from moving forward for God. And press toward. Press toward the mark of the prize. Toward the mark of the prize. Prize is heaven. Salvation, eternal life with Jesus. That's the prize. Don't lose sight of the prize. If you lose sight of the prize, you won't go nowhere. If you lose sight of the prize, uh, you'll stay marred up somewhere. <coughs> Don't lose sight of the prize. Press toward the mark. Don't be apprehended by sin. Know that we're all a work in progress. Your mistake is no worse or no better than anybody else's mistake. A mistake is a mistake. But God says, let me fix that mistake. Let me fix that mistake. Don't let it hold you back. But I need you to keep pressing on. Keep pressing toward the mark. Because I've got work for you to do. I've got things for you to do. I've got people I need you to witness to. I, I got families over here that I need you to touch in some way. I, I, I've got things, I, I got co-workers over here that I need you to, to witness to. Uh, there's people at the grocery store I need you to witness to. Uh, there's people in your life, there's family members in your life uh, that when you get around the, the Thanksgiving table or the Christmas dinner table uh, and you go to offer up thanks and praise and prayer to me, uh, they need to hear that stuff. Don't get marred up somewhere and forget about me. Don't get marred up in your sin uh, and let it take over your life. Uh, and then when it takes over your life, you're no longer longer effective for me. You're no longer effective for me. But yet keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Lord Jesus, God, we thank you for this morning, Lord. God, we thank you for your word this morning. God, we thank you for, for God just explaining it to us, Lord Jesus. And God, just help us to be able to, to understand it better, Lord Jesus. And God, not just know it within our heads, Lord, uh, but God, to, to let it work within our hearts, Lord Jesus. God, that, Lord, when sin comes, and it will come, God, we know that the thief comes. Uh, and, Lord, because he comes, we've got to prepare, Lord Jesus, and we've got to be ready, Lord. So, God, help us now, Lord. To move forward for you and not get trapped up in sin, but move forward for you. God, speak to us here this morning, Lord. If any of us are in our backslidden condition, God, any of us in that sin pit, 
God, come get us out. And Lord, when the help comes, Lord, we'll allow you to do so and not refuse it. God, if there's one in here this morning, Lord, that doesn't know you, God, as Lord and Savior of their life, Lord Jesus. God, they, they don't know what it's like to have a relationship with you. God, I pray you prick their heart, Lord. For God, without you, the destination is hell. And that's not what you want for your children. That's not what you want for any creation that you've made. But God, you sent your son that we may have a way to eternal life with you. God, have your way this morning in your precious name. Amen. We all stand this morning. If you're trapped in a sin pit, come down and turn it over to the Lord and let it get you out. Stop trying to dig yourself out.